Tina, you look after uh, your father. I know he's in his 90s and he has been vaccinated, but you as a carer haven't been. Why do you feel that carers should be bumped up the prioritisation list? All right, well, the very first thing that I'd say is that, you know, we're all talking about being bounced up the list, but it's not really that at all. It's more a case of the, the fact that we're not on the list. We're not mentioned anywhere at all. Um, so it's a question of being recognised and uh, the fact that we um, are holding the community up, really. We're, we're preventing a surge on the hospitals by minding people in our own homes. And the link between carer and patient, it, that's the specialty. That's, you know, um, it's not about us wanting to keep ourselves just healthy for its sake or me wanting to have a vaccination because I think I'm wonderful because I'm a carer. That's not the case. I want a vaccination because I want to be able to continue to look after dad in his own home. And if I can't do that, he's as vulnerable as he was before we ever knew about COVID. Because, I mean, he he needed me for the last two years since he had a, a diagnosis, a dementia diagnosis. He needed me 24 seven and I've been there. And that doesn't change because of COVID. Uh, he's vaccinated and I'm absolutely thrilled and relieved and delighted about that. But that relationship still is there, that if I get sick in the morning, there's nobody to look after dad. Now, I've already had an experience of it uh, because during the summer, my worst nightmare happened. I got carted off with, in an ambulance, blue, blue lights flashing, mm -hmm. um, and I was brought to A&E with a, a stress-related stomach condition. So literally, dad can't be left on his own. Uh, he's a falls risk. And I had to arrange for a professional carer to go in and be with dad. Um, that cost 33 euro an hour. And I had to arrange it from the back of the ambulance on the way to hospital, screaming in agony. Um, just recently, I, I'm after um, forking into the savings and I'm after shelling out 240 euro for a carer to stay overnight so that I could sleep. Because um, dad doesn't sleep at night. He walks the floor as he gets up. Uh, and, and it was basically, I was at the end of my tether and, and I hadn't had a full night's sleep yeah. for 11 whole entire months. And I was literally, I was, I was speaking in tongues. I wasn't yeah. making sense and I I'm was afraid then, I was a danger to him. Tina, where are you on the list as a sand? When do you expect to get your vaccine? Well, that's the point. I'm in general population. Mm -hmm. I'm not there. Family carers are not mentioned in the list at all. I mean, there is a reference in Group 6 to other healthcare workers, and we're all hoping that that pushes in there. I mean, when I saw the list first came out um, in early December, I, I wasn't at all worried because I thought, oh, well, they'll look after us, they'll take care of us. But then I started hearing the, the numerous questions that were raised in the doll, and, and I started hearing us being dismissed. And all of these expressions came into play that we were too disparate to deal with and uh, that a vaccine for us was one less for a vulnerable person. And that's a, 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 an awful thing to, to say. Um, but just to be clear, Tina, I think there's about a half a million, am I right, carers in Ireland. As you say, at the moment, you're just in there with the general population. If carers were lifted out of that group, where do they want to see themselves and who gets bumped down? That is the practical reality of this. Well, there's already a precedent. I mean, we have, for years, the HSC, and it's still up on their own website, for years the HSC have requested carers to come forward with the person that they're being cared for when they're coming for the flu vaccination. And that's because they recognise the necessity of the support system being supported as well as the person who's actually at risk. Now, if it's as serious for the flu vaccine, well, then it should be even more so the case now. But your, your question is very good about the number of carers. But the thing is, in that precedent that has already been set up, that's where GPs come into play, because they're the ones who have in the past um, decided and known who, which of their patients needs to go forward for a flu vaccine. So we need to call on our GPs um, and we need to touch base with people who are already working in the community. It's no surprise that family carers are looking after people in the community. It's mentioned in a, in the, um, a programme for government. Okay. It's mentioned in the National Carer Strategy. And everywhere that it's mentioned officially, it's said that we should be um, right. respected and recognised and supported. But now when it really counts, it seems that we're being dismissed and, and, okay. and completely not spoken about at all.
Uh, Tina, thank you for taking the time out to speak to us this evening. Thank you.